Hello everybody, it's Kerry here at the Northeast Autism Society. It's time for our science activity and I am joined today by Tony and Davy from the Life Science Centre. And today you'll see that they're both sitting in their gardens because we're going to be learning some observation skills and we're going to do a little bit of bird watching. Yeah, well, over the last couple of years, um, I've uh, done quite a bit of bird watching, particularly in my garden. And I've been amazed at the variety of different birds that are in, in my garden. And it's uh, certainly perked an interest in me to, to explore a bit more. One of the things I've done recently is actually I've recorded some of the birds in my garden. I wonder if you might like to see them. Mm, I would like to see them. I think you yeah. have a video, don't you? Shall we watch the video? Because you've got quite a big garden, Davy, haven't you as well? I can see a lot of trees behind you and a lot of, a lot of grass. So your garden must be quite good for spotting birds. Let's have a look. Ooh, that one's colourful. Oh, they must be really hungry. So many of them eating. <laughs> ah, look at him. He's in his, uh, in his little, hey, little house. Oh, so cute. Oh, they're quite big, aren't they? They're much bigger than the other ones. Mm. There's just so many of them. <laughs> yeah, so you've got them up in the trees and on the floor as well in the grass. I can see they're in your garden. Oh, I wonder if they're eating the seeds that have fallen out of the bird feeders. Maybe. Wow, lots, lots of different birds there, lots of different types of birds, I think, Davey. There is, and, and that's one of the things that, I, from the pictures there, I can now tell you what types of birds they are. But I know that if you haven't done much bird watching before, you probably won't know these kind of things before. So one of the things that, that I've done is um, quite often uh, people who watch look at birds kind of look into maybe some books and see what information might be in the books about the birds. If you don't have a book, you could use the RSPB's website to help you identify the bird. Answer questions such as where you saw it, what colour its feathers are, and what it was doing to help you work out which bird it was that you saw. I would really love to have a go at trying to identify some of these birds then by, by looking at these different characteristics. Um, so I think I would like to try and work out which bird it was that was feeding the baby bird in the birdhouse because that was really cute. So if I wanted to know which one it was, what, what kind of questions would I have to ask? Well, you might, one of the first questions you might ask is, what size is it? Mm -hmm. So is it, is it a big bird or is it very small? And that's often one of the, the best indicators of what kind of bird it would be. An example would be, for example, is, is a swan big white swan's a big bird and you would know that that's a smaller bird and so it can't be a swan. So some of it's actually deciding what it can't be as as, as important as what it could be. Mm -hmm. So this particular bird is probably about that size. So it's probably about tw 10 or 12 centimetres long, about three inches long thereabouts, maybe a bit longer than that. Um, okay. So that would be one of the first things would be the size of it. Okay. But so would you be looking? Would you be looking as well, Davy, for the colour of the of the bird? Is that important to look for? It is very important. Um, so that would be the next thing. Would be the colour. Um, so, for example, um, on the chest of that the bird that you're looking at is kind of, I'm going to say, kind of creamy brown coloured. It's very light creamy coloured, but on its face, it has what is effectively kind of two two beard patches or two dark patches on its cheeks and it also has a dark beak. I guess so we know the colour of its feathers and what its beak's like um, and its size so is this enough to kind of narrow down which bird it might be? I'm going to say to you that I think that this is a kind of sparrow but there's a number of different types of sparrow and the, the tree sparrow has a brown cap and the house oh. sparrow has a kind of kind of grey cap. So they look quite similar, but that's part of one of the easy ways of identifying which one is which is by the colour of cap they've got. So, Great. So here we've got a little tree sparrow feeding its chick. It is. Fantastic. And the very, the very day after I took this picture, 
um, I watched the chick actually fledging out of its nest and that means it's actually, it leaves its nest and it goes with the adults to feed with the adults and then to become an adult itself. So that was a real pleasure to watch. That's amazing. That is incredible. That's such a special thing to see. It is. Um, it is. Shall we have a look at um, one of the other birds? Kerry, was there any bird that caught your eye that you wanted to try and identify? Was there a little, was the one that had green colours on, Tawny? Ah. That, it was, I think it, I think it was a greeny coloured bird. Was it this one? Yes, that's the one. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I guess we can look at the feather colours. Like you said, there's green, but are there any other colours in there? I think it's got um, a little bit of grey in as well, hasn't it? And maybe in some parts it's a little bit yellowy as well. It's a little bit lighter green. Yeah, it is. And what's amazing about this bird, if you were to see it flying or when it opens its wings, those yellow bits kind of look like flashes. So they're, they're actually, when the feathers open out a bit wider, it's much more yellow. So that's a really good spot, Kerry, that you saw those yellow bits. They're mm -hmm. quite a, a good indication of what kind of bird that is. Can I just show you one of the things that you often mentioned before is, is having a bird book. And in this bird book, I've actually turned to the page that shows you the green finch. And the bird beside it's called a siskin. And a siskin looks very similar to the green finch in colour, except a couple of things I'll point out to you. The green finch is green completely all over, and the siskin is kind of white underneath. And also, if you look at the beaks, the siskin's beak is very narrow, and the goldfinch's beak is very thick. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really interesting book, isn't it, Davy? Because that allows you to go get a little bit more, more information in a bit more detail. I think you're quite lucky to see green finches in your garden. Because I don't think there's many of them around, is there? Well, again, they're another bird that's been on a bit of a decline. It's been because of a, a disease that they've been getting, but there's actually something that you can do to, to help. So when you've got bird feeders, one of the things you can do is you can regularly clean your bird feeders. Because one of the things that was happening is that the, the green finches were passing the, this disease to each other by, for example, pecking on the feeder, leaving the disease on the feeder, another bird would come along and then they would catch the disease. But if you keep the uh, feeders clean on a regular basis, you'll reduce the risk of the transfer of the disease from one species to another. So that's the sort of thing you can do to make a, a real difference. And I'm sure some of our young people um, would love to try this, Davy. So what, have you got any other tips for observing birds? Well, to be honest, birds are all around us all the time. And people sometimes just don't see them because they're, 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 they're not looking for them. But if you were just walking down the street, you'd often see birds. Or if you're in your garden, or if you're at the park, or if you're at the seaside, you'd often see birds. Um, and, you, and if you start to, to look for them and start to, to just see wee movements at the side of your eye, you'll notice that there are regularly birds there to be seen. And once you start to recognise that the birds is there, you'll see that their behaviours are a bit different. Some of the birds will, be on, will feed on the ground. Some of them will feed in the trees. One of the good things about, the, my, about my garden is I've got trees and, and I've got bushes, and that's called habitat. So the birds need to have a habitat to live in it, and that's somewhere for them to feed, it's somewhere for them to hide, and it's also somewhere for them to nest, and that's where they bring up their, their babies from. Great, and these are great things that you can observe all of these things, not just what a, a bird or an animal looks like, but it, when you observe its behaviours and its habitat as well, that can give you clues to help you identify it. So these are all really great scientific skills. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think, I think this is a really, really good activity for some of our children and young people because there's so many different varieties of birds out there. I would love it if they could go out and have a little look at the birds um, see what they're spotting, maybe using the um, the checklist that you talked about before, but also maybe watching the video that we we've shown in in here and and see what what kind of things um, differences and similarities they can see in, in the birds in your garden, Derby. So I think that's a challenge maybe for some of our children and young people to come back to us and maybe share some photographs, some video footages of the birds that they found when they were out and about. Yeah, and if they and if they can't, if they're not sure what the bird is from the tech, from the identification stuff that they've done, if they ask, we'll try and work it out for them. 
definitely i think that's a great idea so that's the challenge for this week is go and see and it doesn't have to be in your garden it can be at the beach at the park um just walking down the street see what birds you can see maybe take some photos or videos and get back to us and let us know well davy and tony thank you so much for that that was great and um, i shall see you all again very soon Bye 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 bye